Nemo Radio is on the air. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C. Closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! All right, welcome back to Nemo Radio. I'm excited to bring in a guest today. This is something that really caught my attention. So uh, Travis Chappell is here. He's going to tell me all about Guestio. And, and this is something, Travis, you got to give us the backstory of this because it's a very interesting, unique way to kind of connect people around podcasts, both guests and also shows. And that's such a hot in demand topic is not only getting yourself booked on podcasts as guests, but finding great guests for your shows. So if you don't mind indulging me, I guess, to kind of kick things off um, here on Nemo radio, tell me the backstory and how you kind of came up with all this. Yeah, sure, man. So I, I had a podcast uh, still do called build your network for it's coming up. Actually, wow. It's coming up on five years. Damn this year. Um, nice. That yeah, feels super weird to say that. Um, uh, five years, 800 episodes, been uh, running running a bunch and just trying to put out good content. And then uh, when the show started doing well, I started people reaching out, asking about podcast coaching, consulting. Hey, how did you do that? Can you help us do it? Blah, blah, blah. So we kind of leaned into that a little bit, started building some courses, uh, coaching curriculum and all this other stuff, helping entrepreneurs build profitable podcast arms into their business. After doing that for a little bit, we basically found that most people had two of the same problems they couldn't get good guests for their show and they couldn't get themselves booked on big shows. And so Guestio basically was the solution for that problem. And it was something that we were kind of experiencing as well. It was something that just took a ton of time, effort, energy, relationships, years and years and years of, of effort, practice, and hard work. And not everybody has time to do that, especially if they're running an already successful business with you know, employees and uh, expenses and uh, executives and meetings and all this other stuff. It's like, man, well, I can barely find time to do the podcast, let alone like do research on new people. And it's hard to outsource that kind of a thing because you know, maybe that person doesn't know who exactly I would really want to get on. It's difficult to communicate whether or not I do want that person on. It's just sometimes really difficult to make those things happen. And so we're like, well, if you got money and you're running a business and you know how effective it can be to build your brand through credibility and authority by getting great guests on your show and by getting yourself booked in other shows for extra traffic and additional, um, you know, attention and stuff like that, then uh, why don't we just build something that allows people just to pay for it? and shortcut their timeline, uh, and their path to success in this world. So uh, that's how Guestia was born. I love it. I love it. And that's a great explanation. And it leads to just a million questions, of course. Um, but like, so the number one question I have is obviously the vetting process. So, you know, I guess for people that haven't used Guestio, you can go to guestio.com and it's a, it reminds me of a lot of Cameo, you know, where you can, similar, yeah. not, what's that? I said, yeah, very similar. Yep. Yeah. It was that kind of the idea behind it, the, you know, as far as the, the style and the approach. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was for sure. I, w I was trying to use Cameo to, to book guests and I, it's just not what the platform's built for. So I would spend the money and then get told no. And then I was still out the money and then it didn't result in an interview. And I was like, man, if this just existed, but for this world, I would use it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. So that's, that's what we built. So for the guest booking, it makes great sense because you can use Guestio, you can look and you can search by topic or person. And then it's got, it's a really good platform where it's, it basically tells you everything about, Hey, here's this guest, here's their expertise, here's their media clips, here's other shows they've been on. And then, um, you can also find shows to book yourself on. And so the one question I know people always have when you're trying to book yourself as a guest is, how do I know this show really has the reach or will reach the right people? Like, let me ask you this, because now that I have a podcast guru on my show, like, how come we can never look up the stats on podcasts? Like, they're like this big mystery, like people have to self-report or tell you, is there a way around that? Or have you found a way around that? 
Not really. I mean, we have external data sources that we grab. So like inside of Guestio, if you're a pro user, you can see like a pro stats panel for probably about a third or a third or, a, you know, third to a half of our shows. Uh, you'll be able to see like a pro stats panel in there that'll show you at least estimated downloads, ratings across multiple platforms and things like that. Uh, but it's not the most accurate data uh, because it's all guesswork. Uh, at the end of the day, we, we, the only way to know for sure is to get in somebody's media host. So what we do is we pull data from third party data sources, but then we also have a feature in Guestio that allows people to upload screenshots of real data. And then we give them a little verified badge to say like, yeah, we've actually seen screenshots of their back end, and this is what they get. Uh, so we, we, we try to get around it a little bit, but at the end of the day, like you, you really don't know hundred percent. And it's just because podcasts aren't one source there. There's not just one source of data. Like you, YouTube, it's because YouTube is the platform. They own the platform. So they can give you all of the data that they can give you because they literally host all of the media on YouTube. <clears throat> With podcasts, since you can be on 12 different directories, there's no way for that directory to know what your listens or plays are on the other directories. So they can't display data. Like if they display data, it would only be based on what that directory allows for. So like you can go to Castbox and a couple other platforms like that, 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 uh, that show you data like that. They'll show you how many subscribers a podcast has, how many downloads a podcast has, but only on that platform, uh, not on any other platform. So you got to do the math for the other platforms because the other platforms aren't displaying that data. So it's just kind of all over the place. There's not like, well, there's not a democratized data platform that gives accurate, 100% accurate data. Like I said, there's two or three different sites that do it. Uh, we're one of them, uh, but it's all estimated. They're not, none of it's real. It's all estimated. Ah, good to know. Like, and that's always something it's, I mean, if you know the show, it's like, Oh, Joe Rogan or <laughs> whatever, like, you know, like what you're getting. And, and I think that's where a lot of people and a lot of the podcast services struggle. So it's interesting to hear you guys do that because I think that is, especially the verified part. I think that's genius um, because that gets into another piece of Guestio, which is there's like a pay to play element involved, similar to Cameo where you can pay to get a guest to come, right? So people will say, yeah, you can get so-and-so on your show for X amount of dollars, or you can try to book yourself onto a show for you know X amount of dollars. How do you address that? And maybe I have a hang up more because I came out of a journalism background. So it was always just hammered into me like, oh man, you don't do pay for play. That's just an advertisement. And that's, you know, you're just, it's a paid product thing. And, and I always viewed podcasts more as like, media and, and more like an, a journalism, right? Like you don't pay to have the New York Times write a story about you or, you know, you don't pay to have NPR feature you as, as a news story, mm -hmm. but maybe you do. Like, I guess, what's your take on that whole thing about paying for guests or paying to be on a show and yeah. the, the whole ethics and morals of it? And does that impact how people view your brand or, well, it's not as legit because you just pay to be on there. Sure. I mean, it's a really good question, man. And this is kind of one of the things that we were not expecting would be an issue when we first started the company, uh, but it's been something that we've really had to learn how to tackle and really just do more education around it. So you bring up a good point. Um, and to me, the fundamental flaw in the entire argument is that people are referring to podcasts still as PR. And it's simply just because PR companies, it was an easy add-on for PR companies. They were just like, we're already getting you booked in publications. We'll just pitch you on a podcast. Great. And so it kind of got started getting like mixed together with being PR. But in my opinion, it's not really the same thing. Uh, PR is more of a credibility and authority play. Unless it's real good, very good PR, it's not going to bring you traffic. It brings like it, like the advantage of PR is what you do with it after you get the feature how you amplify the feature. Yeah, I got featured in Forbes, but nobody's going to know about it unless you put ad spend behind it or you put it in your newsletter or you put it on your website. Nobody's right. going to know about it. You have to actively um, uh, amplify the message of the credibility piece that was written up on you in whatever publication it is. Like I said, unless it's like, you're like on the cover of entrepreneur magazine, like it's like the actual real magazine. You know what I mean? Like it's very seldom that PR is going to actually move the needle in terms of like traffic or sales. It's what you do with it afterwards. Whereas podcasts, Oh, and, and PR is all like giant media companies and publications that make money regardless of if they write a piece on you or they write a piece on, I don't know, your 
your cat or whatever. You know what I mean? They're going to make money anyway from their advertisers and from the fact that they've been doing this for two, three, five, ten 10 decades, you know, depending on, depending on the news source of the publication. And so with podcasters, a couple of differences, number one, most of them are independent. They're not making a ton of money regardless of what happens with them. They're independent podcasters like me or you that decided like, Hey, I have a message to share, or I have messages from other people that I want to interview. And I want to share those messages and just have good conversations with them. Like you decided to start a show and for 90% of podcasters, they don't make any money. They're like, they're not going to be around in six months if you pay them or don't pay them. Like they, they need a way to be able to monetize the audience that they've built. And if they don't have, you know, three, four, five, 6,000 downloads an episode, which again is 90, 95% of podcasters, they're not going to be able to, to monetize through sponsorships most of the time. Not enough sponsorships to like make any real dent. You know, if you're making 40 bucks a month in sponsorships, it's like, well, I, you know, what does that do for me? Um, and so I got to the point where it was like, well, these PR agencies and booking agencies are being paid quite a bit of money to go get people booked on podcasts. So the question of, of are people willing to, to pay to get booked on these shows was already answered. The answer was yes, they're willing to pay. They're just paying the PR agencies and not the podcasters because of the perception. The perception was if I pay the podcaster, it's all of a sudden pay to play. But if I pay the, the PR company to get me booked on the podcast, that's not pay to play. And it's like, well, it kind of is. You're just paying the person to get you booked instead of the person who has the audience. And so the person with the audience, like I said, is the podcaster who's spent all the time, energy, effort, money to build an audience over a consistent period of time that actually cares about what they have to say. Even if it's only 700 downloads an episode, they're the ones who put in the work and they're the ones that built the audience. It's not NBC's audience. It's not Forbes audience. It's not entrepreneur's audience. It's not CNN's audience. It is their audience. And so if they're not monetized, but people are willing to pay to get on their show, then in my opinion, the PR agency should be the person that's taking the least amount in the transaction. And the podcaster should be the one that's taking the most amount in the transaction because the podcaster is the one that built the audience. And so if you want to be the connection piece, great, fine, do your thing. But the podcaster should still be making money in my opinion. And so that's why we, we look at it more like a marketing campaign instead of a PR campaign. It's not just about publicity and credibility. It's also about traffic and, and, uh, content and sharing your story and getting your message out there. Like there, you're, you're a lot of podcasts are probably going to have a similar return on time investment as a, as a, a piece of a PR will, but every once in a while, you'll get a few of them that'll pop off and they'll bring you real leads, real sales, um, and, uh, and, and actually drive traffic to, you know, your offers or your book or whatever it is that you're trying to promote. And so like, if you are on purpose, getting booked on podcasts for the purpose of selling more of whatever it is that you have to offer. Why shouldn't you be willing to pay podcasters to share their audiences with you? If your intention is 100% altruistic and you just want to help people, that's different. But even the people who say, I just want to help people, they have something to sell. You know what I'm saying? Like there's something that they want to do. There's some advantage. They're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They're not getting on a hundred shows this year just because they want to help people. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying like, I want to help people. But at the end of the day, like I also have this, you know, m a company where we take applications and we purchase 30% of somebody's company and we help explode it. And it's like the more people hear my voice, the more referrals I get for that business. And it increases our, like there, there's something that they're doing it for, regardless of if it's like a direct coaching program, like, you know, people will be like, well, I don't have anything to sell, but it's like, there's something that you're selling. You're not just doing this for fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, this isn't, this isn't, like your hobby or your pastime is just like going on a bunch of shows that you don't have to go on. You know what I mean? So there, there's usually always a goal. That person's usually in it to make money. So the client makes money because they're selling their stuff to the audience. The booking agency makes money because the client is paying them to get them placed on the podcast. The only person that doesn't make money in the transaction is the only person that actually holds the asset in the transaction which is the podcaster and the asset is the audience. The, the assets being sold to somebody else, everybody else is making money. The podcaster makes zero of it. And so we were just like, well, that seems kind of broken, you know, as a podcaster, I like, it, it seems like it would make sense if somebody has a budget to pay for something, they should be paying me more money, not that person more money. The problem is that if there's no way to get connected to those people, then the people making the connections are the people taking the majority of the money because they're the ones that set the fees. Cause they're the ones that have the connections. So the marketplace is a way for us to be able to give people the connection so that they can make the majority of the money 
uh, w- without us, you know, taking all the, all the profit in between. Cause I had people get booked on my show, man. I, I figured this out because, uh, one of this, uh, one of the guys that was a guest on my show, he paid to get on my show through a PR agency. And it was one of the only ones that ever offered me money. And, uh, I was like, Oh, but I, I appreciated them offering money. So I set up like a fair price. It was like 500 bucks. I was like, I, I'd like, for me, it was for me, I don't use it as a way to like bribe me to take on bad guests. I use yeah. it as a skip the line fee to take on good guests, just in a more prioritized timeline. Because yeah. with our show, if you have, if you have an interview show, you're probably getting hit up at least a few times a week. We, we get probably a dozen pitches a week. We, you know, 40 to 50 pitches a month for people that are trying to get their guests booked on our shows that they represent. Uh, And it's like, well, look, I got like four interview spots and 48 requests. You know, it's like half of them are like, you know, not good. They're just not good fits. They're not good pitches. Half of them are not good. The other half are pretty decent. And I'd probably say yes to about 15 of them, but I only have four spots. So like, it's not like, it's not like I'm saying no, because that's a bad guess. It's just, I literally don't have enough room. So there's gotta be some unique angle that puts that person on my show or you pay for it. You pay a skip the line fee and you go, Hey, of the 14 people that you're looking at that are all good fits, I'll give you 500 bucks. And that to me is enough to be like, you're more serious about it. You're going to take the interview more seriously. You're probably more likely to share it. Um, and uh, you're going to appreciate the opportunity more. So yes, let's bring you on my show. And so I did that for this guy one time. And he ended up becoming a client of mine. And I talked to him afterwards. I found out that the PR agency that placed him on my show, I thought I was given a fair price, 500 bucks. They charged him $3,500 to come on my show. Yeah. So, and they paid me 500 and pocketed $3,000. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, see, like, that's kind of the stuff that I, that I have a problem with. It's like, I'm trying to put out a fair price, skip the line type of a fee. And it's like, look, you want to make a little bit of money as a connection? Fine. But you shouldn't be making six times what you're paying the person that has the, you know what I mean? It was just like a, it just put such a like sour taste in my mouth for what was happening. Um, and then, and then if the person didn't get results from that, they're going to blame me and be like, Oh, well, Travis's show isn't that great. I paid $3,500 for that one. It's like, yeah, but I only charge 500 bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, the agency is yeah. the one taking all the money, uh, because they're just in it to make a quick buck. So, uh, so now we have the marketplace, which allows for people to make those connections so that they have the ultimate control over how much they make or don't make on the transaction. Yeah. You know, you really, I mean, that's a great explanation. I appreciate that. And, and I just thinking back in my own career reflection, because I worked in journalism. So I was getting pitched all the time. Then I worked in PR doing the pitching and you're right. Like, I mean, magazines and newspapers, which I started with, like they have paid placements and even websites have paid content, you know? And so it's always been a blurred line. Um, yeah, exactly. And, it's and like, so, a, it's like secret, you know, it's like, yeah, it just hasn't hidden. been mentioned. Like, there's a great, I call it a scam, but like, you'll see, I, I work on LinkedIn all the time, obviously generating leads and you'll see these people who their LinkedIn profile says as seen on Fox, NBC bubble. And it's like, it's a scam where you literally pay like whatever the fee is to publish content on a local NBC affiliate TV stations website under their paid content. And then you make this ridiculous leap and claim you were featured on NBC. And like, yep. that's, that's like a, you know, pay to play thing where you're claiming you're on NBC and CBS, but no, you paid money to put, put a paid press release on the CBS affiliate in Las Vegas. Yep. And so yep. that's an example where like people are trying to be ridiculous, you know, but again, you're yeah. paying to like, you know, so it makes sense to me and, and it does, it resonates with me having a podcast. I get pitched two to three times a day by podcast guest companies. Like, yep. Hey, I have a person. And some of them, like you said, some are good. Some are terrible fits. But yeah, it makes a lot of sense to say, I don't have that many slots anyway. And right. if you're going to pay me, then, and you're a good guest, then heck yeah, exactly. like skip the line. And that's my biggest thing. Like I tell people that all the time is like, I am not ever trying to get somebody to sacrifice their, whatever you want to call it, journalistic quality integrity, of their show and quality yeah. of the show or bastardize yeah. their audience. Like I'm not trying to get anybody to do anything like that. What I am saying is like, if this person is a good guest and they're a good fit for your show and they're willing to pay money to get on it, accept the damn money, like take the money. Why? Like there's so many podcasters that are so opposed to making money. It blows my mind, but they're the same ones that are like whining about the fact that they can't make any money. It's like, look, I just offered you like 350 bucks and you said no, because it like goes against your morals or whatever. And it's like, this doesn't make any, like you would say yes to the guests. Yeah. I want to, I want to pay you like they're paying me the money. I'm just trying to give you some of it. It's like, fine, I'll keep it. If you want me to keep it, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to like 
reward you for all your hard work and sacrifice that you've spent building this audience. It's really smart, Travis, because like, I do think about like, yeah, I've, we all pay PR people. I was a PR guy, so you paid me to go get you that. So you were paying to get on. It was pay to play. You're right. paying to get on those. And then also the other thing, like, I think about the free shows that I got on, I still did work. Like one of the things I did early on to get on big name podcast was when I was just starting, I went out to people like John Lee Dumas and Chris Brogan and was like, Hey, can I rewrite your LinkedIn profile for free? Like no strings attached, just trying to build a relationship. They're like, yeah, knock yourself out. I don't care. I don't know who you are. And so like I put in all this work, rewrote their profile and that became the basis for building relationship, building value uh, and then getting on their shows as a result. Like that's how I got on entrepreneur on fire was I rewrote JLD's profile for free. He's like, wow, this is actually really good. I'll actually use this. <laughs> and then that builds a relationship where he's like, why don't you come on the show and we can talk about LinkedIn and how you use my profile. And so, but that in my sense, I was paying for that. Like I paid yeah. with my time and effort as opposed to just, hey, I could be a good guest. Here's the boxes I check and I'm willing to pay a fee because I know like his audience blew up my inbox, right? Like, so yeah. that's where... There is that, I think that's the key thing that people have to get over with myself included, booking yourself as a guest on podcasts. You just don't know, like I've been on some really big shows that I thought would blow things up and they didn't. And then I, the most, the highest paying client I ever got was from the most obscure, like insurance industry, financial tips podcast. Yeah. Uh, one of the ones where I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this, but okay. And sure. that guy, two years later, that's the other long shelf life. Uh, two years later i heard you a year ago and i got into your thing and you didn't know but i was in your funnel for the last year here's my money i'm like what <laughs> like, yeah right so it's it, it's interesting I, I think it's a really smart thing so you know i guess as you're growing this like how are you trying to grow guestio like what's the big challenges you're running into because again i i stumbled into you guys because somebody from guestio reached out and said hey we have guests we're willing to pay and i was like like what yeah. like Wait, this what? is new yeah. <laughs> you want to give me money you don't know me you don't know my show how right. do you know i'm even legit and good and that's what started the whole conversation where i started stalking you online and going who are these guys so like but how how else because i know you've got investors and you guys are up and running so like how's it been going and, and how are you trying to grow it and, and get the word out yeah it's going well man right now we're uh we just have a couple of new ad campaigns that we're running um it, it's really been I've been so busy. I haven't been able to focus as much on like retention and referrals. So that's kind of the next step for us um, is just like trying to really build a strong community of people who are willing to like spread the word about what we're doing. Um, because like, frankly, we, we just, we need more podcasts. Uh, we need more, like there's, there's no shortage of people who want to get booked on shows. Mm. We can do that all day. It's just, there's a shortage of quality podcasts to get people placed. To book them on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And so like, we're just like, look, please come into the, please come into the marketplace. Like, there's no strings attached. If you're a podcaster, we're not asking you to pay us money. You know, we just take 20%. That's it. Put your fee there. We'll get people booked. We take 20%. Depending on the downloads that you have and stuff, we'll work them in different pricing. You know, we have shows in there for 10 bucks and we have shows in there for 5,000 bucks. Depends on how many downloads you're getting, how long you've been putting out episodes, what the quality of the content is. We'll recommend different pricing for different people, but get started doing something. Um, you know, if you can, if you're doing eight interviews a month and you can all of a sudden make 50 bucks an interview, now you're making 400 bucks a month doing the thing that you were already going to do with guests that you would have interviewed, even if they didn't pay you anything anyway. So like get in there, like let us start sending you some guests and be willing to accept some money, um, get paid for, for the, the work that you're putting in, man. We've had, you know, certain podcasters that have made 30, $40,000 with us this year. We've had some that have made two, $3,000 with us at a, some made a couple hundred bucks. It's, you know, everything in between. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're, we're looking, we're looking for more shows. It's always been kind of like the marketplace model. That's always chicken or the egg. It's like, which side do you go after first? Do you right. go find guests, you go find shows for us. It's kind of been like uh, playing both sides a little bit. Uh, so right now it's like, we went and found a bunch of guests. Now we're kind of overloaded on guests and we're trying to fill it up with a bunch of shows. Um, so, and then, yeah. yeah. From the guest perspective. So if you're on there as a guest and you say, Hey, yeah, my fee is this. Do you have the right to say, I don't want to go on the show, even if they're willing to pay to you do some vetting as a guest to make sure you totally. want to be on a certain show? Okay. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So if you, if you get in there, there's the ability to pitch and there's ability to be booked directly. So shows can get in there and actually pitch you and book you as a guest. 
Um, but if you're a pro member, what you'll want to do is get in there, build out your profiles, make yourself look good on your media sheet and stuff. And when you go pitch shows in the marketplace, you can pitch up to 50 a month and then they'll go look at your profile and go, is this somebody that's good fit for us? And then they can respond to your pitch and say, they can accept it without charging you anything. They can accept it, charge their full booking fee, or they can accept it and charge some discount of their booking fee that's displayed on the site. So if you're a pro member, you can go in and, and pitch and hopefully get some free bookings out of it. Yeah. Or you can just hit the book button and bypass all the pitching and you know wondering if you're going to get accepted and just pay for the booking directly. Um, now, the podcaster still has the ultimate decision of whether or not they want to say yes or no, even if, even if you pay their full price. Uh, but the odds of being accepted when you're offering 500 bucks are significantly higher than offering $0. Yeah, as long as you're not like a psycho or serial killer or something. Um, yeah. yeah, or like going to totally ruin their show or whatever as a guest. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, what advice do you have, I guess, as we kind of wrap up, because I know I appreciate the time and we've gone deep on this, but like, so for someone that is pitching themselves as a guest and they get accepted onto a really big show, whatever, what's your advice for how to like leverage and monetize that? So if I'm the guest going on an entrepreneur on fire or whatever it is, a big show, what advice would you give people to make sure they get the most bang for their buck after the show goes live? Like what should they share? What, what should they have ready? What should they say? That kind of stuff. I mean, you should be sharing as much as you can over a long period of time. Um, like we'll share stuff from interviews that I've done two years ago mm -hmm. on social today, as long as it's still contextually relevant, yeah. keep sharing it for a long time. Cause That's it still makes point. you look good. You know what I mean? Especially if it's a show like Entrepreneur on Fire, um, you might not get as much traffic as John's going to get, but still worth like if you have an email list, yeah, it's worth like sharing a credible appearance like that to your email list. Maybe 10% of your email list listens to EO Fire and they're like, oh, no way. John was on EO Fire. I should, I should go check out that episode. Makes you look extremely credible. Makes Puts you back in front of them. It's free, valuable content. It lets them get to know you better and pushes them along in the buyer journey, in the customer journey. Uh, so share to your email list. Share the full episode of your email list. Um, you know, uh, what we've been doing for some people recently is taking the interviews and putting them on their own podcast. Um, and uh, releasing them as, you know, featured interviews of themselves on their show. Um, <clears throat> you can take it, chop it up into social content, put it on Instagram reels, YouTube shorts, TikTok, uh, take tweetable quotes from it. There's so many things that you can take from, from a single podcast interview, leverage across all of your social media platforms and push out in the form of advertising, in the form of copywriting, in the form of blog posts, in the form of Instagram posts. Um, doing those like single pieces of content can be extremely uh, helpful for the rest of your content strategy. Yeah, I really like that idea. And I was, I, I've found too, like it, the shelf life is pretty incredible. Like I still get people from Entrepreneur on Fire from like four years ago like, yeah, right. or social media uh, examiner. I was on their show years ago and I'm still getting out. I'm like, yeah. I didn't know that was still out there. But like you said, it's it's still relevant. It's still evergreen advice about, you know, whatever topic. And so that is one of the great benefits. Well, I really have enjoyed this, Travis. You definitely have opened my eyes to it. The skeptic has been won over, so I love it. Um, <laughs> yes. Where should where should people go to learn more about Castio and kind of get started either if they want to get their show on or start trying to get themselves booked? Like, what are the next steps you'd recommend? Yeah, you can sign up at guestio.com or app.guestio.com. Uh, so that's guest, like B-A guest, G-U-E-S-T-I-O.com. Um, and, uh, and you can get started today with a totally free account. Uh, so you don't even have to sign up for pro to get started. You can get started with a free account, set up your profile, see how you like it. Um, and then you can upgrade to pro in the future. It's 97 bucks a month. We include a mastermind inside of that to connect with the people, other entrepreneurs, other creators. Um, so we, we try to just over deliver on all the value, um, for anybody that uh, trusts us enough to jump in and get started. If you're a podcaster, especially, we'd love to uh, have you on the platform to send guests to you and get more bookings for your show. Um, just change your default booking setting from $5 to something else, $7, $11, $12. Everybody's five, uh, like there's 80% of people are five bucks on there. You'll get more of a response if even if you're more than that. If it's $8, $12, $15, $35, $85, you're going to get better responses. Um, if you have something that is looks a little bit more unique and looks like you actually care and that the odds of you responding are going to be high. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. And I have to say, like, using the platform, it is really slick. The user interface is really easy. 
Um, it was fun to, it was fun and easy to get all my stuff uploaded and it, it's smart because it sets up everything you need and then it's done. And then it's, yeah. you kind of can be on there. And I can see the idea of as you get more shows, as you get more guests, it's going to be, I mean, it, I could definitely see it can be just like cameo, you know, and it's, sure. it's a, it's a unique solution because right now you're right. You're already paying someone anyway. Like you're paying a, a PR company or a podcast company to try to pitch you. And I love the idea of saying, no, I know the shows I want to go on. I'm just going to go direct in yeah. and cut the line. So yeah, man, brilliant idea. Well, thank you, Travis, so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. Of course, brother. Thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun.